What's up guys? It's Ronnie again, and I am again still at KamoraCon, and right now I have an incredible actor sitting next to me, and her name is Morgan Berry. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. Um, if you don't know, she's 13 on My Hero Academia, you've been Seven Seeds, Overlord, Attack on Titan, Borderlands 3, um, uh, the Rising of the Shield Hero. It, it's it's like Souls at Work. There's been a lot. You've got, you've got a list of like like two hundred things on IMDb. Yeah. IMDb alone. Is like, <laughs> <laughs> do you sleep? Yes, <laughs> and I find bits of time to sleep. Yeah. When did you start? Um, I've been acting for seventeen years, but I've been doing voiceover for only about five years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. You've, wow. You've done a lot in the last five yeah, years. Yeah, I'm really blessed to be able to do what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. What made you decide to do voice acting? Honestly, I just stumbled into it, mm -hmm. actually. Um, I've been acting for so long, and I love the performing arts, every aspect of it. And uh, Todd Habercorn was having a voice acting competition at a con. And I, in that moment, I was like, I think I might be able to do that. I'm an actor, and I love anime, and I never, it never really occurred to me that voice acting would be a thing that I could do. But I decided, you know what, I'm going to compete. I'm going to do this competition, and you know, if this is what the Lord wants for me, because I had just left my job, which was my whole life, my whole life, and so um, my whole life was revolved around it, and I was wondering what, what I was going to do, you know, to pay the bills. All right. And, um, but yes, uh, at this convention there was a voice acting competition, and if you won the competition, the prize was an audition at Funimation. Oh, wow. Yes, and I, you know, I was like, well, if I win this competition, then I'll know it's what the Lord wants me to do with my life, you know, voice acting. We'll see what happens. And I knew that I, I loved conventions. I've, oh my gosh, my first convention was in 2013. It was Anime Fest, and that was, was life-changing for me because it was the, my first con, and I had heard about anime conventions, but I, I never had the chance to go to one. And then I, I met someone at church who I, I overheard her talking about Anime Expo at one point, and I was like, anime? <laughs> like, like, and she's like, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of conventions, and we're, she was like, I'm planning on going to one in Dallas, and I was like, can I come with you? Like, and she's like, yeah, and that's how I made a friend, you know, um, one of my best friends, and I went to that con with her, and it was, oh gosh, it, was, it really was life-changing. In that moment, I realized, this is where I want to be all the time. You know, right when you walk through the, those doors of the, a, con a convention, it's, or at least for me, it was, it was like, wow, these are my people. Here, <laughs> I belong. I have a place to belong, you know, with like-minded people. It was an incredible um, discovery, okay. or revelation. And so, gosh, going back to the story, sorry, I, I jumped <laughs> yeah. with my stories. Um, <laughs> I decided I'm going to go to this con, I'm going to compete in this uh, voice acting competition, and hey, if this is what the Lord wants for me, then I will, I will do some voice acting, and you know, hopefully that will pay the bills in the future. And I won the competition. I didn't expect that. I, it was something I prayed about. I was like, all right, if it doesn't work out, then I'll know this isn't for me. If it does, then I'll take it as a sign. And I never thought that I would, you know, be able to get paid to go to conventions, you know? Right. Like, like when I felt such a strong feeling, you know, walking into my first convention and being like, this is where I belong. And I'm like, but that won't pay the bills. What am I, <laughs> you know, I was like, this, I was like, but Lord, how is this going to, how's this going to pay my bills? Like, I had such a strong feeling, like, this is where my life is headed. But I, you know, wasn't sure how that was going to play out. And here I am now. Now I'm a voice nice. actor. I get, you know, paid to do this. And, uh, yeah, it's, I'm really blessed to be able to do what I do. And, you know, a lot of opportunities started coming to me uh, after I won that audition at Funimation. They called me in for more auditions, and I worked my way up in the industry and started booking with other studios. Um, but, yeah, this is truly my calling, and I'm really excited about this journey and I'm blessed to be a part of this welcoming industry voiceover uh, it's it's such a supportive community it's way more than on camera <laughs> I'm just gonna put it that way um, on camera is very um, dog eat dog 
Mm. You know, see that. but with, with voiceover, even the veterans in the industry, many of them, they're so they they want to help people who are in the industry. You know, they're not like move aside, newbie. They don't have they don't have that attitude. They're like, oh yeah, I'll help you. Like yeah, here's what to do. Here's what not to do. And I really appreciate that they helped me um, in this journey. I've learned from many, many veterans in this industry. Um, Debbie Derryberry, Richard Horvitz, Dave Fenoy, Neil Kaplan, so many. Uh, Terry Douglas. Some are big ones. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, I am so dedicated to this craft. I want to learn from the best of the best. I'm not going to... Now, at, at the risk of sounding... Um, snooty I guess I don't I'm not gonna learn I don't want an amateur teach teaching me if I'm going to learn how this business works it's not gonna be from someone who's only been doing this a few years right. I'm gonna I'm not gonna learn from an amateur I'm not gonna waste my money on someone who really doesn't know how the industry works so I I do my research I look up their credits I say what have they done are they still booking like uh, do they know the industry today because tre trends are always changing mm -hmm. in the voiceover industry and I'm just like, you know what, I need to learn from the best of the best. I, will, I, I'm, I save up my money and I use it on those classes and workshops so I can learn and grow. Because as an actor, you continue to learn and grow in this ever-changing industry. Mm -hmm. And so I continue to learn. Uh, Aaron Fitzgerald is another amazing voiceover coach. Oh my gosh, she's incredible. I want to learn from people who know the business. And so... That's where most of my time is spent. I'm either taking classes, uh, workshops. Um, I used to do a lot of theater. That's where I started uh, in middle school, high school. Seems I hear that a lot from voice actors. Yes, theater. you know, when you're a voice actor, it's because you love acting, and hopefully because you also love the stuff you're, you know, the projects you voice in. Like I love anime, and I'm and video games, and it's really, it's cool that I get to. Combine two loves, acting and singing sometimes too. I have a YouTube channel. Yes, and a Patreon. So check it out, yeah. The Morgan Berry on Patreon. Hey, yes, thank you. I mean, yes, Thanks yes. for the plug. <laughs> but yeah, and on YouTube, my, my stage name is The Unknown Songbird. Nice. And that's where I do a lot of anime song covers, full length song covers, like from anime shows. I adapt the lyrics from Japanese to English and I cover the entire song. Like, you know, sometimes you'll hear the one minute, 30 second version on, you know, before an anime, the anime openings, but I like covering the full songs. And I, I, I write the lyrics, like, I adapt them so that they fit every syllable. It sounds, okay. I want it to be very close to the original. I'm very dedicated about that. Yeah, because um, I hear that's really hard to do sometimes. Oh, because the words don't, will yeah. almost hardly ever match up when uh -huh. you want to do it in English. Yes, and sometimes they sound weird, uh, depending on the, um... Okay, for well, example... Because we also speak backwards, technically, yeah. compared to the rest of the world. And I'm going <laughs> to give an example. You know the... Unconditionally... You know that song? Um, n nobody says, I love you unconditionally. Nobody <laughs> says that. <laughs> I, no one says, I love you unconditionally. <laughs> like, you know, that there's a difference. Like, you know, just... You know, so that's, that's the difficult part of writing sometimes you it fits the the syllables it fits the beats but it sounds weird so <laughs> i so, can yeah. see it. so yeah that happens you run into that a lot when you are adapting lyrics from another language i actually did a song parody i love voltron i love voltron and so i wrote a parody song to the tune of despacito <laughs> It's called Voltron Heroes. So if you are Is a Voltron fan, oh, yeah. okay, okay, I, um, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So go to my YouTube, The Unknown Soulbird. <laughs> it's on Spotify too, if you want to check it out, or it's on Amazon too. It's it's everywhere. But Voltron Heroes, yeah. And I wrote and sang that uh, parody song, and that Despacito was in Spanish. So matching up those syllables and writing that took me three months. Wow. Three months. It was very difficult, and I went through a mild depression while doing it because yeah. it really does take a lot of energy out of you. I guess yeah. And you know, the thing is, that what I love, I love the performing arts, but sometimes um, it can be draining. And so I, and the thing is, I, you kind of need hobbies outside of your work. Mm. But I don't really have any other hobbies, and I'm still trying to find another hobby outside of the performing arts, because really the performing arts is my love, but it's also my work. 
And so I feel there's really no escape from it. There, I mean, unless I mean I could just chill on the couch, eat food, and watch, you know, shows, Netflix. Yeah. But right. um, I want to be a little more active than that. <laughs> yeah, I want to be more active than that because I, you know, it, I as a performer, I struggle to. Um, there are moments when I I should probably. Uh, I, I feel there are moments where it's good to to chillax and you know, take time away from work. <laughs> But I feel very like, oh no, I, sh I feel like I should be doing something. I feel, uh, what's the word? I I feel like, I don't know, it's a weird feeling not doing anything. Anxious. Yeah, anxious. Yeah. I get anxious. I'm like, no, I, I should be doing something creative. You know, like, you know? Yeah. But uh, I need to find those moments where I need to find another hobby outside of the performing arts. So what made you decide to actually decide to put the anime... I'll do this music. I just, I just oh, I started doing the song covers before I started doing voice acting. Oh, really? Yeah, it just, I don't know. It just, I'm really picky about music. And so I was looking for the opening song for Attack on Titan on YouTube. I wanted to hear it in English, a full cover. I just, I don't know. For some reason, I was just looking for that. I was like, hmm, I want, I want, I want to see if I can find this somewhere. And there were a few covers of it, but none that I really liked. I'm really picky. Some of them were a little pitchy, some of them I didn't like the lyrics, and I was like, you know what, I'm a singer. I want to try to make my own song cover and, and post that. And it took off. Nice. You know, uh, people liked it, and so I started doing more of it. And that's where that started, you know, supply-demand. People wanted more, and I was like, okay, cool, I'll yeah. make more, this is fun. Yeah. Nice. I'm upset. I just, I just discovered it. I was like, I'm, I'm listening to you do all these voices forever, and then I'm like, oh, get the interview. Okay, researcher. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm jamming out right now. Okay. And then right on. I'm glad you like the music. <laughs> yeah, and then I found your Patreon, and I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll get to this when we get home. Thank you. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So, um, I gotta, I, I have to ask. You've done such a plethora of voices now. Do you have a favorite that you've done? I do. Uh, Love Live Sunshine is a very fun show about a girl band. And uh, Yoshiko, or Yohane, it was a lot of fun. And um, gosh, there's so many different dynamics with her voice. She, she's a Chunibio. So she's very like, she has a persona. <laughs> and then she has her usual self where she talks normal. And then she goes really low again. She, and I, she was just a lot of fun to voice because of the, change, the changes I got to do vocally. But also I love what she represents. She represents being yourself, being your shining self, being who you want to be. And uh, that is such an important message. Uh, you know, I... I, you know, I got really teary in the booth when I was recording that scene, the, the scene where she's just mm -hmm. running away, and, and, you know, there's a part where she's, like, boxing up her costumes and stuff, and she's like, this is how it should be, I need to box it away, I can't, nobody likes me when I'm the fallen angel persona, nobody, I need to just be normal like everyone else, mm. but um, I love that she, in the end, she, her friends supported her, and they're like, no, do, you be who you want to be. And I, I love that message. So that was my favorite show to work on. Nice. So uh, my understanding is with a lot of um, voice acting, there's a lot of times where you, you walk in and you, or you get called in for, to do a voiceover and you don't even know what the role is yet till you get there. Oh, you yeah. Mm -hmm. I, so have you ever had that happen where you walked in, they hand you the role and you're just like, oh, no, oh, and walked away? Oh, I mean, in the beginning of my, of my career, it, it felt a little scary to say no. Like, mm. ooh, like, I don't want to, this is a really fan service -y show. I don't know if I want to be a part of it. And in that case, I'll use a fake name mm. for, for reasons. Would, so, I, you know, I'd rather people not be like, you know, get on the internet and go, oh, this is her pseudonym. This is her fake name. Like, this is Morgan. Like, don't do that. Like, that's <laughs> rude. So, yeah, there's a reason, you know voice actors use fake names on some titles. Okay. So there are some titles where, where I will do the work, but I'd be like, mm, let's put a fake name on this. Because I used to be a children's minister. Okay. And I do not want those, you know, the kids I mm. teach to uh, Google my name and find those etchy shows. Like, you know, I had to be really careful uh, about that at the time. And so, yeah. But, um, 
Yeah, other than that, no, there hasn't been any, any um, moments where I'm like, mm, I'm not going to do that. There was one moment where I recorded for a video game, and I can't talk about it yet, NDA, but, um, so, <laughs> I, I didn't audition for this character. I, I auditioned for the game, but they gave me a different character that I did not audition for. They cast me as someone else. And so I went into the booth, and they said, um, okay, so this character, um, we need a Louisiana accent. You know, can, can you, uh... You, you can do that, right? And I was like, I can try. <laughs> As a voice actor, a lot of the times, so you, you, they won't tell you ahead of time, like, we need you to do this dialect. Can you do that? Can you even do that? They won't say, they won't ask you even if you can do it. You just got to do it. Wow. Because you jump in there and they expect you to know how to do it. So I went in and I was like, uh, I can try. Uh, would Southern work? Because I'm from Texas, so I can do that. And they're like, yeah, yeah, let's see how it sounds. And so I used a southern accent instead, you know, uh, you know our Texan accent. And they're like, yeah, it works, yeah, we like it. And I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, because it was a big game. So, and I didn't want to get recast. I was like, hopefully they'll accept this. Hopefully it's good enough. And they're like, yeah, we'll take it. Because like, I can't do a Louisiana accent. I never tried that before. So they accepted my Texan accent. Nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. So, um, so I'm guessing, as you just said, you're from, it seems to be you guys are all from Texas. I was going to mm -hmm. ask, are you from Texas or yeah, did you move I, to Texas? I'm from Texas. I grew up in Texas. Where, where about? Uh, Euless and Keller, uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area. Oh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. Corpus Christi. Oh, cool. So, nice. <laughs> sweet. Nice. I'm like, man, I never should have moved out. That's where I could have been for voice acting. <laughs> it's where it all is, apparently. I mean, yeah, the hub, really. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, you got a uh, Funimation Entertainment, Sentai Filmworks, yep. Gearbox Software, yeah. Ocatron Studios. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's quite a few. It's the, yeah. it's the Hollywood of voice acting, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there any any role that is out there, or a particular type of role that you're just you're hoping you get to do one day? Ooh, I love voicing for young boys. I don't know why, but it's just I feel more comfortable voicing for boys for some reason. Hmm. I don't know. It's just a lot of fun. And um, it's been Bart Simpson's been voiced by him for as well. Right, for right. The, how long now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And there's a, there's a show, an anime called Hitman Reborn, and it doesn't have a dub to this day. And I, oh man, I would just I love Suna, I love his character, and so I was like, one day I would love to voice for him. He's so great. But um, I highly doubt the show will ever get a dub, and that's okay. But if it did, I would love to voice for Suna, <laughs> and so. That'd be cool. Mm, so you heard that. Make sure that you start whatever petition you need so we get it and she can... There we go. <laughs> We're on it. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for speaking with me and for coming to Kimura Con. Yeah, we appreciate I'm glad it to be so here. Much. You guys are awesome. Thank you. I love this. Kimura Con's just... It's awesome. It's like there. the best. Like, it's they, yeah. so well run. Like yeah. I'm having a blast they, already. They, they, and have you seen the merch? And like, it's yes. just so incredible. I went to the exhibit hall and I went shopping and it was so <laughs> great. I saw all the figures and there's a lot of Love Live Sunshine merch. Yeah. And I love that. So I just... Mm, I went on a shopping spree. <laughs> okay. Well... Like I said, we're at KimuraCon, and if you don't know, she's Morgan Barry, because I told you that already, so you should know, and <laughs> you can see her on My Hero Academia. You can see her in about 400 different things of anime. You just, it's not hard. If you pick up, watch anything anime, it's just a good chance she's in there. Otherwise, make sure you go to patreon.com, the Morgan Barry. The Morgan Barry. Yes. Make sure you do it right. And if you can't find it, I'm also on Twitter and Instagram, and I have a Facebook fan page, and all of my handles for that are at the Morgan Berry. The Morgan Berry. Yeah. Got it? All right. Thanks, guys. See you later. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Appreciate it Thank so much. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks.